Thank you all very much. It is very nice to be back here, and an honor to be back here for the last show of the third season of this extraordinary show. I, uh, I did the last show of last season, and, uh, I sometimes. I suppose you've wondered, and I've wondered, why I'm back again to do the last show of this season, because, I mean, they have some quite incredible hosts. Last week was Maureen O'Hara, the winner of an Academy Award. A few weeks before was Bill Bojangles Robinson, perhaps the fastest rising young tap dancer of our time. And I think, when you really come down to it, and I say this, I think, without any false sense of pride or modesty that what it probably is, is that the Saturday Night Live accepts the fact that, for me, they gain a sense of, what shall I call it? Class. I mean, after all, I have been, for the last year or so, working on a major motion picture called The Little Princess, with some quite extraordinary people. I've been with them for a year. Oh, uh, Richard Green, Anita Louise, and my good friend of the film, Mr. Cesar Romero, who has become a real pal of mine, a real friend, and a wonderful, wonderful guy to work with. Oh, uh, I mean, we've been, we've been together now for almost, I guess four years now. And Anita Louise has been with us, too, and she's a wonderful girl, and I could tell you terrific stories about her, if I had the time. All of us working together, in this kind of enterprise. I think, doing something as big as a picture like this gives my career, and the Saturday Night Show, a sense of working on something, a perspective of something larger than just a weekly television show. I think the way I live, for instance, the way I live in Hollywood, the way I conduct myself both professionally and in my private life, demands a kind dignity to the show that most guests can't give it. My home in Hollywood, I think, epitomizes, perhaps, what people like myself. What can I say about it? It's not garish, but it represents a kind of classness, and a kind of Hollywood success that most people understand and go for, and perhaps envy a little, and this show certainly can use some of it. I think there are fine people here, and they understand exactly what they're doing when they ask me to come out here and say some things about them and about myself. I've done this a few times, and I think I'm proud of this time, because I know how I'm helping them out of a tight spot, being the last show of the year. And I know Lauren, if he were here, would probably say the same thing because, not only is he my buddy, but because he's got that same sense of show business, and the same feeling for me and for all of you built in. Shirley doesn't know Cesar Romero. He doesn't know Anita Louise, either. He seems to know he's here now, but clearly he doesn't know why. You see, Shirley's career is over. It's been four years since Curly Top. Even John Bowles doesn't return his calls. This is a tough period for him, burned out and lonely, what his psychiatrist calls midlife crisis. It's sad the way things work out in comedy. One day you're on top of the heap. Shirley never married. She lives alone in his small Hollywood apartment, just a few magazines and a telescope. You figure it out. Sure, maybe we should have gotten some big star to do the last show. Some say with NBC in third place in the ratings war, we can't afford to be sentimental. But we believe there are some things more important than ratings, like helping has been through a difficult period. But then, that's the kind of people we are. Well, we've helped him through this. Now it's up to you the audience, to help him through the rest of the show. And Shirley, if you're watching, you can help, too. If you see Shirley somewhere, and you recognize her, just nod or wave. It will mean an awful lot to her. Remember, the wheel turns, and maybe someday, if your world crumbles, you can go over to Shirley's small apartment and use his telescope. So, I wanted to thank you for this opportunity to talk to you, and, uh, we'll be right back.